Good afternoon, all, on this not-so-snowy day here in Brookline. After all of the hype, I can honestly say I'm very grateful. I'm Susan Howards, a local domestic violence attorney with an office in Brookline, but a national practice. We are here due to the courtesy of Brookline Interactive Group, Cable TV. This is their show, Safety Net, dedicated originally to domestic violence, but over the years, particularly during COVID, we have expanded the topics. And you'll see today we have with us Rachel Lerner, who is general counsel. Rachel, am I correct? To Hebrew Senior Life and That's their right. um and their program for elder abuse. Is that correct? That's right. Rachel, welcome. We're so glad you're here because this is the most underreported and underspoken about topic in my criminal world, really. I know that there's elder abuse and loneliness and isolation, but it's very rarely talked about, so I'm thrilled that you're here. Let's just back up a little. You went to NYU Law School? I did. And then you worked in the nonprofit sector in New York and D.C.? I did. I've been in, in law firms working for a variety of clients, some for-profit, some nonprofit, seen a lot of different things. And how did you um, end up at Hebrew Senior Life in the Elder Abuse Program? Yeah. And you're, direct, you're director of it, right? So, yeah, I wear a few hats at the organization. Um, I'm, I'm general counsel for, for Hebrew Senior Life. And so any of their legal matters flow through me and my department. And then um, when I enjoy my, my best time at work is when I'm working as a director of an elder abuse prevention focused program we have. We call it the Center for the Prevention of Elder Abuse and Neglect at Hebrew Senior Life. Um, and um, we've been up and running for, let's call it two or three years now at this point. Yeah. Oh, well, and how did you, how did you fall into that? How did you get, in, because you're general counsel for Hebrew Senior Life, this was part of your job or is this one a passion of yours? No, it's such a great question. It's a passion of mine. Um, long before uh, I came to to Hebrew Senior Life and they were kind enough to see that it's, um, it's really uh, so relevant to the mission of the Hebrew Senior Life organization to um, try and eradicate uh, elder abuse and um, reach the, the frailest, most vulnerable um, and sometimes most isolated seniors out there. Um, but I... I had an interest in this topic actually as a little girl. Um, I visited um, someone with my mom. Uh, she was involved as a um, a visitor to a, a senior that was in her 90s when we met her um, uh, in Chicago where I grew up. And um, she had been the youngest of nine children and she was the only person um, left in her family. And she had a lot of health troubles, but she was the most charming, most entertaining, most um, elegant woman who had amazing stories, um, a steel trap mind. And um, she was living in um, a subsidized apartment in a, a bad part of town with roaches everywhere, with oh. um, people would bring her groceries. Um, she had a hard time even moving around her small apartment. And I, I was eight when I met her. Um, and I remember thinking at that point, um, what happens if people like my mom don't find this woman? Um, and uh, it's something that stuck with me ever since. What happened, Rachel? We need to hear the end of the story. <laughs> well, we visited her. We were a part of her lives and vice versa for well until she passed away when I was in college, actually. And she was about, I think she was 105 when she passed away and we'd have her over to our house. We would take her to parties in the community. And what was so amazing about her is that everywhere she went or anytime someone else from an agency had an opportunity to visit her, she would, she would collect people in her life. Everyone fell in love with her. Oh. And so oh. by the time she was celebrating birthdays uh, as a, uh, in her early one hundreds um, you know, there were maybe 20 people who had, um, really fallen in love with her and wanted to come and help celebrate. So it was oh my God. So in spite of the circumstances of situation and replacement, she thrived. She yes. really did. She did with the help of of people visiting and um yeah, it was really it was really incredible. It was special. Well it certainly made a lasting impression on you. So 
now that you're dealing with the seniors, the frail and the vulnerable, but we're not all frail and vulnerable. Some of us are still out there fighting the good fight. Um, I'd like to ask you a question. Could you describe what self-neglect is and what are the signs and what can be done about it? Because I'm not sure I know and I'm a senior, but thank goodness I'm not frail anymore. Sure. Self-neglect is something we we see often um, in the elder abuse prevention world. Um, and it's something that we see from time to time at Hebrew Senior Life. Um, Self-neglect is, is typically defined as um, someone who is not making decisions in their best interest and not taking care of their basic needs, right? So they're not doing the things they need to do to make sure they're, they're well-nourished, uh, make sure that their bills are paid, make sure that they're, um, they're dressed appropriately, that they're warm enough, um, sort of the fundamentals that you need to get through a day. The person has, has stopped either providing that for themselves or um, allowing others to, to help them provide that for themselves. And there can so be- what do you do about this? This? Sorry, what do you yeah. do about it? How yeah. do you find it? Oh, gosh. I mean, it, it really- <laughs> The numbers that we have are, you know, as you mentioned, Susan, it this this problem. Anytime I give presentations on on this topic, I the the graphic I use is a, an iceberg, right? So you kind of see the very tip of it above the surface, and then underneath, it's so much bigger. And that's what we experience with the amount of um, self neglect, in particular, that actually gets reported or that people find out about through one channel or another, versus. How much of it exists out there that that no one's um, aware of or able to help with? So, um, the problem is someone who's um, actively engaged in in self neglect isn't necessarily going to be aware um, or have mm -hmm. a desire to reach out for help. They're kind of past that, right? Mm -hmm. So, really, anyone who's laying eyes on that senior, or friends, or family, anyone who's somehow engaged with a senior who's in that position and can can share that information with someone who would, would be in a position to help that that is so crucial um and i think about this a lot and i i train on this a lot it can be really hard to you know you have a neighbor across the street or there's someone you used to see at the local library or at your your prayer service and and you haven't seen them as often or they look frailer or maybe more distraught or confused than they used to it can be really hard to figure out how to engage with them without embarrassing without offense, them. Right. Or, or absolutely them or interrupting their whatever. I, I don't know that I would know how to do it, but I know I would call people who did, but that's because I'm an attorney. I would call Hebrew senior life. I might even call the police, even though I would think that's probably <laughs> to do a wellness check. That mm -hmm. would be really, really scary. I think it would be better if somebody from, Hebrew senior life came in and in, in normal day clothes and had a little chat. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. That's really, really hard. But there are resources, right? If they want to avail themselves. There are, there are lots of resources available. You know, I, I to your point, Susan, I, it's true. You can, you can call the police, you can ask for a wellness check and, and the person never has to know that you're the, you're the one that called. Um, right. So that's, that's always one benefit. But I also like to say, even starting with just how are you doing? What kind of day are you having? I haven't seen you in a while. How are things? Engaging with a person like that directly um, can sometimes open the door to more conversation as well, which can be really impactful. But if that feels uncomfortable or that's not really going to help solve the problem, um, you know, our program, we have an elder abuse prevention um, phone number um, that can be reached and you can leave a message at that number at any time. Um, we have an email address as well. And will, you, will you give us the number and the email address absolutely. so that we can find it at the bottom of this? Because I think that would be really helpful. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, and we you can also find information about us um, at the Hebrew Senior Life website. Um, anytime. You know, wants to learn a lot of seniors aren't facile with websites. It's and true. in fact, I was... Um, doing some lobbying to get seniors more involved in, in the town. And I said, you know, you can just Google or go online. I only do what my children tell me. I don't know how to do that. And that really, really upset me. These were very sharp, had all of their faculties. 
but they're just afraid of technology. So I, I think we have to find a way, and maybe as part of your program, you have a way to get around that and say, listen, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. And so I don't know how. That. Yeah, I'm so glad you raised that, Susan. I, you know, it's one of the reasons we keep a good old fashioned phone number, <laughs> right? Because we don't want to push people to have to find us online or an email if that's not comfortable. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, I'm also, I'm really glad you raised this point about sort of internet um, comfort or savviness because the fact that a lot of seniors are reluctant to be online or they are relying on younger um, family members or friends or caretakers, um, it actually is one of the key reasons why we see seniors really um, falling for a lot of internet scams um, and, and being victimized and in a lot of financial exploitation. Um, it's more and more prevalent. And I think, you know, information that comes to seniors through an email or they're being asked to um, go to a website and do something, I, I think it can be um, really intimidating and um, it can be challenging for um, someone receiving an email like that or, or having that kind of solicitation to, to navigate through it. Um, and unfortunately, there are, there are scam professionals out there that are just they're really praying. I mean, it's really, praying. really absolutely. They, yeah. they, they, they stick with it. They're very persistent. They're very persevering. Yes, you're absolutely right. I don't know what we can do about it, but I, I wanted to say, you know, I, I didn't say this because I wanted to say, you know, you're young, you're sharp, you understand everything that's going on. Why don't you just master the basics so that you can do your own? And then I didn't say it because I didn't want to offend anybody and I was there for another purpose, but I, I know that the senior center has um, classes and lessons. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you do, but it mm -hmm. might be something that we pay a little more attention to. Um, but anyway, what do you think, what do you think the biggest problem in addition to isolation, because I know that's a huge problem from the work I do, is with seniors? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things that, um, can make seniors um, more susceptible to being scammed, to being taken advantage of. Um, the isolation is huge. Um, the the loneliness that comes with isolation is is also huge. I I think that we've seen you know particularly through COVID, particularly through you know even coming out of COVID to some degree, just the the long winter months you know being closed in. What happens is. Um, a few different things. One is any any contact can become um, more welcome and more attractive, right? So sometimes our our sensors are down a bit um, because we're just eager for that that connection. And so that's where things like romance scams or um, you know scams that generally sort of prey on a person's emotions um, and build a relationship supposedly only to then be flipped to ask for money, right? Or to ask for other personal information that can be used to take things from that person. That really, um, that opportunity really opens up when people are feeling lonely, um, alone, mm -hmm. afraid. Um, the other piece of isolation and loneliness is um, the people that usually would put eyes on a senior um, who's not able to necessarily get out as much, people come to visit them, that all, falls by the wayside. It gets harder in the winter. It gets harder, you know, when the days are shorter. And if you don't go out as much, people aren't coming to visit you as much. Um, there may be some signs and symptoms that someone who was visiting, or if you were going out and about on a regular basis, you know, people would see. But it this isolation, this loneliness kind of, if there's a problem that's starting, it allows it to to fester and to kind of go unnoticed that much longer. Um, so we've seen we've seen a lot of that in the past few years, unfortunately, and that's why we always anything that we can do to encourage seniors to stay connected to friends and family and stay connected to each other um, and empower one another and advocate for one another. Um, we we always think that that is so important in our in our program um, at Hebrew Senior Life. We we do a lot of training and education sessions with seniors, right? Because seniors can can advocate for themselves. And absolutely. It, Absolutely. And if they're if they're sort of on high alert for how to recognize the the you know what a what a financial scam in an email might look like or or they're they're made aware of common scams that are like hitting other people in their community, they're really the first line of defense 
<laughs> to make sure that someone doesn't take advantage of them, right? So um, we, we really focus a lot in our program on, on senior empowerment um, and, and sort of self-advocacy. Yeah. Um, we're talking to Rachel Lerner, General Counsel for Hebrew Senior Life, and she um, is head of an elder abuse uh, program there, which is very, very unique. I'm just wondering what else we could do to make seniors more involved um, in, I'm gonna to say town activities here. One of the things that I'm concerned about is that I don't think that our town representatives visit the seniors enough mm -hmm. to make sure that they're aware of different issues in the town and the extent of the issues. So that, and I'm not sure that seniors really are aware of how they can get involved. There are many commissions in Brookline and they're looking for people and you don't necessarily have to go in person. Uh, most of them are Zoomed. Like when I get off of this, I'm attending a select board meeting and it's Zooming something about Zooming, which I really am not. Anyway, it's very <laughs> nice that they're doing it. But I said again to the this group on Sunday, I said, you know, you don't, you can Zoom. And they said to me, no, we want to go in person. We don't Zoom. What does that mean, Rachel? We don't Zoom. Mm -hmm. The whole world Zooms. The whole world Zooms. It's true. I, I wonder... That's so interesting. I, yeah, I, I see this a lot with my own mother, actually. She lives out in Wayland and she's um, in her, her late seventies at this point. And I, she has really gone from saying, what, what is Zoom? I don't Zoom to really embracing it. <laughs> and That's I have right. to say, I, do yeah. that. Oh. I, I, you know, honestly, I think that she felt most comfortable learning from her friends. I think learning from each other and seeing that you know, her friends figured it out and they, it's, she's less embarrassed um, to learn that way. And it's, it's, um, it can build confidence to see that, you know, all the other people in her senior center class are, are, are on Zoom as well. And, and it's, it creates a, I think the senior center is such an extraordinary resource. I mean, I think you can, you can ask a question there and you can, it, it's just, there, there's no stupid questions at the senior center, right? I mean, that's kind of how I think about it. And, and that's what they're there right. for is to help. I mean, technology is hard. Technology is hard for young people. Uh, it's, and it changes by the day, right? And, and it is just such a vital tool for connection these days. So I don't think it's, it's really an option to say, I don't Zoom. I think, you, I think it has to be, I need to figure out this out. And, and, you know, maybe my friends and I can figure it out together. Um, but how can I say that? How can you say it? What do you mean you don't do it? I didn't say it, but I, I, I just was sort of, I said, I know the senior center has, one, Brooklyn Senior Center is phenomenal. The range and the breadth of their, I'm sure all of them are. I've seen Wellesley, I've seen uh, Watertown, I've seen different senior centers and they really offer so much. And the other thing is they watch, they see if somebody's ne neglectful or yeah. if they're having a problem, because I know of somebody in town who is and. Every single person I spoke to at the senior center very anonymously knew exactly who I, and they've watched. And they're very kind. They give people like that jobs, little, I don't want to say make-believe jobs, but just little jobs, not for money, but to keep them coming to the senior centers so they can watch them, they can make them, make sure they get a lunch, make sure they get a coffee um, and feel useful. I think that's the most important, feel useful. It's, it's such a huge problem as more and more of our population is aging. Um, I'm not sure that we have the wherewithal to keep up with the needs of our aging population. I may be wrong. I mean, it's only recently that I even admitted I was a senior to myself. I mean, I just didn't admit it. I didn't, I still work two jobs I, and I have no family here, but I'm wondering, do you get involved with the families? Oh, it depends. Um, we certainly see cases where the families are the perpetrators. And in those cases, we do not get involved. Um, we, we first and foremost try to protect our client um, and help our client at their pace um, separate in the areas where they really need to for their own protection. Um, but in some cases, we, we have family that are, that are involved and concerned um, and have referred um, clients to us. And in those cases, we absolutely, we do engage with the family. Um, I think, you know, pride, um, pride plays a, a big role in a lot of these situations. Um, and it's been very interesting. We've, we've had some success um, really partnering 
with families, uh, particularly adult children. We've seen scenarios where adult children have a pretty good handle on what, what their parent needs. Our agency has a pretty good handle on what their parent needs, but it's only when we, we discuss it together that it's really heard. Um, and so we, we have found that that can be a really, um, really productive way of kind of breaking through. Yeah. And does the person know that you're talking to the family? I would assume they do. They do. Yeah. I mean, in those situations, they do. Yeah. They would, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other thing I want to say, Susan, getting back to kind of um, seniors who can, you know, enjoy some independence and sort of um, do things for themselves. I, you know, with our clients, we we have seen um, real positive changes. So I, I haven't really mentioned yet our our services. We do a lot of education and awareness building in the in the community and partnering with um, other agencies to to get the word out about elder abuse and signs and symptoms and all of that. But we also run a shelter and and services program, right? So we have we can provide shelter for seniors facing abuse or neglect or exploitation up to Where? five. No, I don't mean the exact location, Rachel, but yeah. how many how many seniors can you accommodate? Because I know yeah. in domestic violence there aren't enough there aren't enough shelters. Yeah, right now our capacity is five. Um and we uh sometimes we're we're full. Right now we actually have a few vacancies. Um people who come to stay with us do tend to stay for for months um as opposed to days or weeks. So um you know that that impacts the turnover um and our vacancy rates, but we're also looking to expand um, because we recognize um, all, uh, certainly in the, I mean, the, we're, we're, our program is actually the only dedicated senior shelter um, for abuse, neglect, exploitation. Um, but even just elder homelessness is a huge challenge right now. And so, um, yeah, the, the need for ca shelter capacity is, um, is really crucial right now. Um, so we offer shelter and supportive services and, you know, some of the clients that have come to us, before they came to us, they they were really um, struggling to take care of themselves. And it was sort of unclear whether they could function on their own. And with us, you know, over time, separating them from their abuser or whatever their circumstances were um, that needed to be um, addressed, we, we see a lot of our clients um, take more pride in preparing their own meals. Um, they, they even start to take care for other people. We have, we've had clients that, um, all, you know, they, they take care of each other. They develop great friendships. Some of them, um, they leave our shelter and they go, they, we help find them housing in, in the same building. Um, it's, it's, it's oh, really wow. extraordinary. Yeah. It it's, is. It's amazing to see. Um, so again, it's that connection. It's that, you know, taking them out of a somewhat isolated environment and, and not only allowing them to care for themselves and sort of have that pride and self-determination again, but allowing them to build a relationship. Um, you can see the positive effects. Wow. Terrific work that you're doing. I'm going to throw a, a wrench into our conversation because I didn't mention it to you. There's a lot of talk on TV about age and people being too old to do. I'm not going to mention names, but I think it's pretty obvious on both sides of the aisle. They're not um, fit to do this just because of their physical age. What do you, how do you address, how would you address that? I know how I address it, but how would you address it? Yeah. I mean, I, respectfully, I'd say they're crazy, right? Okay. <laughs> you crazy, much more crazy to talk about age. Yeah. I mean, because <laughs> I don't think it, it matters. Um, I have a friend who's 90 years old and is probably the sharpest, sharpest person I know. Yeah. Seriously. Just, yeah. Yeah. You're doing terrific work. In the last couple of seconds that we have, what would you like the public to know about your organization and uh, about elder abuse and neglect? So, you know, there's a popular saying out there with respect to um, security generally. And the, the saying is, if you see something, say something, right? And I, I borrow that when we're talking about elder abuse prevention and awareness. Um, I ask everyone to not be shy. And if you see something, if you're concerned about a senior in your community, please say something. If you're not comfortable saying something to them directly, absolutely reach out to our program. We have social workers on our team. We know how to have these conversations. Um, and there's a lot of different agencies that can get involved in a lot of different ways um, to keep seniors safe and, um, and vital. So um, uh, HebrewSeniorLife.org 
is our website. Um, like I said, we do have an elder abuse prevention line. Um, I'll start with the email address um, because it's pretty easy to remember. It's um, elder abuse prevention at hsl.harvard.edu. So let me say that again. It's elder abuse prevention, all one world, one word at the letters hsl.harvard.edu. And our phone number that we can answer during regular business hours, but if you don't catch us, there's a voicemail box and you can leave a message and we get back to you within 24 hours. Um, mm -hmm. That number is 617-363-8428. Again, that's 617-363-8423. And we work with the senior center. We work with your office, obviously, Susan, um, the Brookline Police Department. And so um, if it's too hard to remember how to contact us, um, I would say you can always reach out to the senior center and, and they know how to engage with our service as well. Rachel Lerner, thank you so much. This is so important. I hope you'll come back. I know June 15th is Elder Abuse Awareness Day. I hope you're going to do something really celebratory all over the state because I think people, once they know that this exists, there's a little bit more interest. And we really, I think one of the ways is to um, tackling isolation is if we can get seniors involved, not to be afraid of Zoom or to go to meetings, it would just help everybody so much. Thank you so much. And please know that the content of this program is mine and Rachel's. And this is Susan Howard's, and we will see you next time. Bye. Thanks so much.